Hey guys, welcome to the very first episode of Living Room Learning and welcome to my living room. Just like you guys, I am at home most of the time right now and that means that all the work I would normally do from MP, I am doing from home and usually from my living room. So I thought I would do my videos from here too. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know about this little thing here. This is my baby monitor so that I can hear baby Riley from her room. Right now, she is asleep, and that is a wonderful thing. But if she wakes up, which she sometimes does, you might hear her cry on the baby monitor. If she cries, here's the plan. I will pause the video, go upstairs, take care of her, put her back to sleep, and then come back down and finish the video. I really wanted to let you know that because I might have to pause the video in kind of a weird spot, and I wanted you to know why. Okay, all right. What is living room learning? Well, you know, I'm a speech therapist and right now a lot of us aren't together. So some people aren't doing their speech therapy or we're doing some speech therapy from teletherapy. Um, <clears throat> but sometimes some things that we work on in speech therapy are really um, helpful when there's stressful events and stressful things going on. And even if you don't get speech therapy right now, some of the things that we work on might be helpful for you. So I thought, why not make some videos from my living room of some things that we might be covering in speech right now so that they will be available to everyone. And if these things aren't helpful to you or they're not things that you need, then enjoy the video and move on. And if they're things that are helpful for you, fabulous. And I just look forward to being able to um, communicate with you guys and share some ideas and thoughts that I have. So today for our first episode, we are going to be talking about what to do when we're uncomfortable. All right, so there's two main things we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about how to help ourselves when we're uncomfortable to calm down and get more comfortable. We're also gonna talk about how to make a plan. And if you're not someone who makes plans very often, I hope you will after you watch this. So what we're gonna do first is go through a comic that I wrote and drew some pictures for. And um, we'll read it through that and um, watch how the um, person in the comic helps himself calm down and helps himself make a plan. And then we'll go through some of the handouts that I have attached to this post today so that you can use the same types of things to help yourself calm down and to help yourself make some plans. Also, quick note, I have some dogs and some cats who are in this room with me. So you might hear some dogs snoring and some cats meowing. And that's just life. So um, again, welcome to my living room. All right, let's get started. <clears throat> this is a comic about a pretend hipster and it's a story about Chip. Chip is a pretend hipster who enjoys his daily routine. Every day, Chip wakes up, eats breakfast, goes to work, heads to MP, has a fabulous time of course, then goes home, has a wonderful healthy dinner, takes care of his chores, takes a nice warm shower, and goes to sleep. One day, Chip finds out that MP is closed. So is his work and many of the places he enjoys going. <sighs> Chip's confused. He didn't do anything wrong, but his whole routine has changed. Changes in routine like this normally make Chip pretty upset. He's not sure exactly what to call all of his feelings, but he knows he's uncomfortable. And he knows he's uncomfortable because his brain and his body start to feel different. And here are some things that are happening inside Chip's brain and body. He's grumpy, he's tired, his fists are clenched, his jaws tight. He's saying the same thing over and over again. His stomach hurts and he's not hungry. His foot's tapping and he's, he's just, his body feels different. And that's a good sign that he's uncomfortable because things are starting to feel different and feel off. Um, and when those things are happening in his brain, they show up in his body too. All right, so Chip needs to find a way to make his brain and his body calm. So that's the first thing that we're gonna talk through here right now is how is he gonna do that? And he's going to use what I call the 4S approach. And that means Chip is going to make decisions that keep him and other people safe. 
He's going to surround his body with things that are soft or comfortable. He's going to participate in some things that are soothing. And he's going to participate in some things that support his goals. All right. So let's look at that a little bit deeper. He's going to first choose something safe. All right. And that means he's going to decide right at the start that even though he's uncomfortable, he's going to choose to be safe. He's not going to hit himself. He's not going to hurt anyone else. He's not going to hurt himself. He's going to stay in safe places and make safe choices, even though it's hard. That's a big first step for Chip. Sometimes he struggles with that. All right. He's going to next take his uncomfortable, worked up, upset body, and he's going to take himself and put himself somewhere soft and comfortable. By the way, if you don't think soft things are comfortable, find the things that are safe and comfortable for you. So Chip has a nice comfortable hoodie, has a nice soft, uh, soft bed, and a nice comfortable beanbag chair. So he's going to choose one of those places to go sit and go lay and get himself feeling on his body a little bit calmer and more comfortable. All right, so that's how he's taking care of his body. And the next thing is to participate in something soothing. And soothing things are things that help you feel calm. These often are things that help calm your brain. So for Chip, he has some choices here. He's going to either watch TV or play some games. He's going to take a nice warm shower, listen to music, and maybe go for a walk. And those are things that make his body and his brain feel good. So those are the soothing things. So he's safe. He's somewhere soft. He's choosing to do something soothing. And when his brain and his body are feeling a little bit better, he's going to choose to do something supportive of his goals. This is really important because this is where we grow, right? When we're do choosing to do something supportive, it means that we are connecting with another person and we're either sharing um, how we're feeling, what we're going through. We are making sure that we're connected and with someone or for Chip, he likes to journal. So Chip is going to do that and you may do that or you may um, not like journaling. So that may not be appropriate for you. And then one of the things that, that uh, one of the things that Chip's working on is being able to tell someone I need help. And, you know, that's a really big goal for a lot of us. So um, the supportive section is when we're trying to connect and help ourselves grow through a situation. Um, so we've gone from a really uncomfortable, we've worked down from safe into soft, soothing, and then choosing to do something supportive. And that's how Chip has worked on calming his body. All right. When Chip's brain and his body feel better, Chip knows that the next step is for him to make a plan. Plans help Chip feel more comfortable even though his normal routine has changed. <clears throat> it's like you make a new routine. You make a new plan of the steps to follow. Step one of Chip's plan is to express his feelings however he can. No matter what Chip is feeling, it's okay. And it's okay to talk about or write about or draw about those things. And it's important to always remember that whatever we're feeling doesn't last forever. So Chip, for example, has on here when is this going to end? Why is this happening? This, this whole change makes me feel, ugh, makes me feel bored. This flexibility thing is awful, but I am excited. My siblings are home and, you know, Chip's got a lot of different feelings and all of them are okay. And this is a worksheet that we have um, that I have attached to this post for you too. Um, we'll go through that in a minute, but this is Chip's step one of his plan. This change makes me feel, and then he writes and draws and colors or whatever he wants to do to get out those feelings. All right, step two of Chip's plan is to work with his loved ones to decide how he's going to stay as comfortable as possible even though his routine has changed. So Chip found out he's going to have to stay home for a while, MP is closed, work is closed. What in the world is he going to do to stay comfortable? So Chip worked with his loved ones, that could be your friends or your family, or um, maybe maybe sitting with your dog helps, I don't know. Well, whoever your loved ones are, having some time to think with them about what's going to help feel help this, this time feel more comfortable. All right, so Chip says, I will feel more comfortable if he goes outside, eats three times a day, drinks water, 
does MP online, has some quiet time, dances. There's a lot of things on here that Chip lists. And this is really where he gets to choose how he's going to engage in activities that help him feel better, even though his routine is different. It's really important because this is where we get to have some control back. None of us have control about when MP is going to open, but we do have control about what we're going to do about it at home. All right, step three of Chip's plan is probably the hardest step in my opinion, and it's to do what he said he was going to do. So all of these things that he said he's going to do, now step three, Chip needs to do them and do them every day so that he builds a new routine <clears throat> these are the things that Chip's doing to stay safe and they're helping his brain be comfortable and calm. When Chip gets uncomfortable, he'll start, um, go back and look at the four S's and make sure that he's doing those to calm himself down and he's going to keep trying every day. And this page here just says, I can do this, 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 even when it's hard. So Chip's going to keep working even though this isn't challenging and it's a difficult time. All right. The last step of Chip's plan, and this might be my favorite step of the plan, is to think about all the good things that are going to come when MP opens back up. All right, so this is a thought bubble of what Chip's thinking. He's thinking about, all right, MP's open, my work is open. Oh, my heart is going to be so happy. My staff and my other hipsters will be back and I just can't wait and I'm looking forward to when we're back. Chip knows that the staff at MP can't wait to see him too and until he's back where he wants to be at MP with his friends and staff, Chip's going to remember a hipster is hugely important wherever he goes and a hipster is loved just as he is. All right, so that's my comic. I think a lot of us can relate to that. I know I certainly can. My routine has changed dramatically since I've been home. Um, and I know we've been dealing with this for over a month now, but it's still, it's still tricky and it's still challenging. So um, let's review those four S's again, just so we're all on the same page. And this is a handout that you have. Um, so when we are uncomfortable, we are agitated. For me, when I'm uncomfortable, I get my face gets red, I get itchy. That might sound weird, but my, my head gets itchy. Um, I just feel like I am kind of crawling, my skin's crawling. Um, that's when I know I need to find some ways and do some things to help myself feel more comfortable. All right, that first one, super important. I will make decisions that keep myself and others safe. It's absolutely a priority. We have to keep ourselves safe and choose things um, that help keep ourselves safe. All right, number two, I will surround my body with soft or comfortable things. This is big because a lot of us, when we are uncomfortable, we tend to do things that make us more uncomfortable. Uh, for example, if I'm angry, sometimes I'll stomp around or I'll close doors really hard. Or, you know, if I'm doing uh, the dishes and I'm upset about something, I might be kind of uh, not being very careful with the things. And I'm teaching my body to do more aggressive types of things when really what I need to do is to show myself how to take care of myself in that moment and to do calming and more comfortable types of things. So like Chip did, finding a safe and comfortable spot to sit or lay or a nice hoodie to relax in. Um, I don't know what you guys do and maybe you can leave some comments below about what it is that you guys enjoy uh, or ways that you can help yourselves, um, help yourselves become more comfortable, um, what soft things you enjoy. Um, <clears throat> and they're not the same for everyone. So whatever it is for you is, is fabulous. And if you don't like soft things, as long as it's something that's safe and comfortable, that's what our goal is. All right, then the fourth one is I will participate in something soothing. So the soft and comfortable takes care of the outside of our body. The soothing thing takes care of our brain and it engages our brain in something that we like. If you like to play cards, if you like to go for a walk, if you like to um, watch your favorite movie, listen to some music, those are the things that help your brain start to, start to calm down. So you're, you're safe, 
your body's in a, in a soft and comfortable place and you want to get your brain back to a soft and comfortable place. So that's what the third one is. And the fourth one again is participating in something that supports our goals. And that might be the hardest thing about calming down, but that's the area where we have to keep working because that's where we grow. If I only do things that, um, and I only do the same thing over and over and over again, I just keep getting upset and calming down and upset and calming down, but I don't uh, work with someone to learn about it or talk through it or share, uh, get my feelings out about it, I'm not going to learn and grow a whole lot. So that's the hard part for a lot of us is to um, find, you know, if your goal is to start asking for help or your goal is to identify your feelings or if your goal is to be able to, um, you know, share a difficult experience uh, that from your life with someone else and kind of tell a story, then these are, that's a really important thing um, to tie in to calming down because it's really meaningful usually. All right, so those, this is the handout you have, and I encourage you to use that if you need it, or if you just kind of need some reminders, or you want to print it out and keep it in your house somewhere. And that's how we work on calming ourselves down. Then we work on that really, really important piece of making a plan. And if you've ever been in speech with me, I can guarantee you we've talked about making a plan. Um, Making a plan to me is uh, one of the most meaningful and powerful things that powerful things that we can do for ourselves because it gives us the control back. And um, a lot of times that's what we want. If you have your entire routine changed, you usually feel pretty out of control and we need to find ways for you to get some control back. So using those worksheets on, <clears throat> I will feel more comfortable if, it's a really, really good place to start. Um, what could I do to help myself? You can also work like Chip did on identifying this change makes me feel, you know, like what am I feeling right now? And that's helpful to gather some information and also just to get it out. Um, when I journal and I write, I write out all the things I'm feeling just to give it a space to be because it's not bad. Being uncomfortable is not, um, it's not a bad thing to be uncomfortable. We just have to work through it. And then I also provided you guys with a blank stick figure, which looks a little silly, but it does give you the freedom and the space to draw how your body feels. And you know, sometimes uh, I'm gonna draw, when I'm uncomfortable, I'm gonna draw that, that itchiness, I'm gonna draw um, my red face. Uh, I might even draw some crazy hair if it's one of, been one of those kind of days, um, but really reflect on here what your body's feeling like. And if that's, you know, if, if sharing those kinds of things are hard for you, Maybe just showing that picture to someone could help um, communicate some of what's going on. So just to recap, we talked about two main things, calming down, going from uncomfortable to comfortable again, and then making a plan. If you have any questions about either of those things, please, please, please write it below or email me. Um, and if you uh, need any help with anything, by all means, let me know. I know this time has been challenging and I know you have a lot of support. All the staff is waiting for you. Um, we're all gonna be so excited when we're back at MP and I know you will be too. And keep tuning in because I'll keep working on some living room learning videos to share and who knows what I'll come up with next. I mean, I think the possibilities are endless. All right guys, I'll see you soon.